Hello guys. So I've been sniping on Battlefield for more than 5,000 hours. It's pretty much all I do. But in the eight years I've made content for Battlefield, did you know I've never made a guide on how to do it? Well, that changes right now. In this video, I'm going to cover all the basics you need to know about sniping in a Battlefield game, specifically 2042. Everything will be timestamped below. And if anything helps you in this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing because there'll be a lot more sniper tips in the future. So jumping straight in, there are three fundamental rules that I've always told people as a baseline for sniping in Battlefield. Number one, never stop moving unless you're taking a shot. You basically never need to be stationary in this game. Get into the habit of constantly strafing left and right when staying at a position. Moving in a small circle is even better and harder to hit. You can even jump around and slide whilst reloading and rechambering. Go nuts. However, you do have to stand completely still to be accurate when sniping in this game. If you're ever wondering why your shots are not going where you aim, it might be because you're moving slightly. So the second you need to take a shot, that's when you stop moving. Number two, never prone while sniping. Now, whilst this might be the most realistic method, you get absolutely no advantage in this game whatsoever by being prone. And you don't even blend into your environment at all either because your scope glint will always give you away. The only time you should ever prone is when you're diving behind cover whilst being shot. Try not to dive into prone when you're in the open because that makes you an easy target. And number three, if they're moving, aim for the body. If they're still, aim for the head. Some games make headshots much easier with faster bullet velocities and larger head hitboxes. However, with Battlefield, there's usually a lower bullet speed. So the most efficient way to snipe moving targets is the largest hitboxes. This also helps when playing on higher pings as well. It's much better that you're hitting two body shots consistently than occasionally getting the one-shot headshot. If players start pushing your position at close range, don't keep peeking them pull back to another position to aim at where you were standing. Always make them peek you, not the other way around. That way you're ready standing still for an accurate shot and then rinse and repeat. Keep retreating and making them peek you. If they get close enough and you're forced to fight at close range, you can try and take a far shot or no scope before switching to your secondary behind cover. But always switch to your secondary if they're close. Don't try and be a quick scoping hero unless you're trying to style on them. When using most secondaries in this game, you're actually better off just hip firing. There's so much spread when you aim down sight and move that you might as well just move faster and hip fire and make yourself a much harder target. Hip fire is much more accurate than you expect. Now, you're finally in a safe position to start sniping. Don't just sit aiming down your scope at all times. Scope in, look for targets in obvious spots for a couple of seconds, and then unscope and look at your surroundings for a few seconds. You're much more likely to see threats or targets by doing this. Once you've spotted a target and you aim down sight, don't hold your breath until you're about to take the shot. There's no need to keep the scope steady until you're ready to fire. And don't just hold your aim waiting for the perfect shot on a target. If your target already knows you're there, take as many shots as you can when you can without making yourself an easy target, i.e. not moving. So many players hesitate waiting for an easy shot when they should just take a chance with any shot. Wait too long and the opportunity will be missed entirely or you'll just get shot from somewhere else. Moving on to moving shots. When aiming at a player that's running, don't track your target directly. Always try to place your crosshair ahead of them to run into the shot or leave your crosshair in a place where they're likely to run to, such as doorways or cover. Next up, let's talk target priority. When fighting multiple players, always try and aim for the player that's aiming at you first. You have to prioritize your biggest threats first, otherwise your streak ends right there. And then there's positioning. When thinking about where you should be positioning yourself, the best spots are places where you are overlooking objectives or high traffic areas from a raised position. Not directly above though, on tall buildings for instance, as this actually makes shots way harder. Always try and find spots where you can peek from multiple angles. So two windows in a room, a rooftop with a couple of bits of hard cover. If you're outside buildings, find bits of cover with more than one angle. For instance, rocks where you can peek both sides or over the top. 
meaning three angles to choose from. When you peek from your position, always peek a different angle every single time. If you only have one angle to peek from, only peek that angle once to see if you can get a shot first try and then fully reposition. If you peek the same angle twice, not only is it the most predictable, but it's very easy for someone to hold their aim and instantly kill you when you do. When fighting other snipers, the last person to stop moving is the one that loses the fight. So if possible, keep moving until the other sniper fires their shot first. Then you can safely stand still when you know they can't shoot back and take an easy shot when they go to stand still again. Up next, let's talk traversing the map. As you're moving around the map, try and avoid the open spaces. Always keep in mind the closest cover to you and try and take a route that goes past those cover points. Also, avoid sniping from the tops of hills or the sides of hills. You can essentially be flanked from 360 degrees, vehicles can see you more easily, and you're basically just way easier to spot. Cover with overhead shelter is always a better choice. Now, for judging bullet drop and velocity, if you're coming from war zone, expect to be leading your shots a little more in battlefield. The bullet speed of the highest velocity builds is similar to the slowest rifles in war zone. So you'll have to start aiming in front and above your targets after only maybe 50 meters. The DXR sniper is actually very forgiving at long range, however. So you'll barely have to aim above targets at long ranges thanks to its low bullet drop. When shooting targets at long range, always keep a mental note of the bullet drop. Take a practice shot on some cover near the enemy to see where it is, then roughly put your crosshair the same distance above the player. This is another great reason to use the AX scope in 2042, as it actually has mill dots that you can use as a reference for the drop. The 6X scope, for instance, has no such visual aid and makes long range consistency harder. The more you keep playing with the exact same sniper build and same sniper scope zoom level, the more consistent you'll get over time. So try and stick to one sniper once you've started. Now, for the best snipers to use, if you're new to sniping, I would recommend going for the best bullet velocity builds on the SWS and DXR snipers. So that means using the longest barrel and the high power rounds. I currently use the ATEX scope because of the mill dots and for some reason it's got the fastest aim down sight speed, but that might change in the future. Use the SWS if you are under level 24, but then switch to the DXR when you unlock it, simply because it will be easier to hit shots with the DXR as it's a direct upgrade in bullet speed and damage. Now funnily enough, I would actually not use the 50 cal NTW50 for sniping infantry at all. It has a very slow bullet speed, making shots even at 50 meters hard to hit. Plus, a lot of players run armor, which stops the one-shot kill. Both the SWS and DXR headshots are always a one-shot kill. And trust me, you will get far more kills if you get better with those snipers than you will ever get with the NTW-50. However, the NTW-50 is the best for fighting vehicles, so if you're overwhelmed by vehicles, just switch to the NTW. As for the best specialists, I still see a lot of people using the Casper specialist for their sniper class because he's got a ghillie suit. However, Casper doesn't actually have any abilities that help with sniping at all, only reconnaissance. The best characters for sniping, in my opinion, are McKay for aggressive sniping and Angel for defensive sniping. McKay specifically has a passive trait that makes aiming and moving faster than any other character, much better for peaking angles quickly. Whenever you get into trouble, you can just use your grapple hook to get away from vehicles and pushing players. Plus, you can use your grapple hook to get to hard to reach positions where you can't be flanked. I would take the healing box for unlimited healing and the smoke grenades to get out of any situation where you're caught without cover. As for defensive sniping, and whilst you're grinding levels to rank up, I would recommend playing Angel. Never run out of ammo, extra health versus other classes due to armor, and if you use the healing stims, you can always resupply using the loadout drop. Great for when you're hunkering down in one spot, especially on breakthrough defense. I take the sensor grenades and constantly throw them to catch flanking players on the minimap, way better than Casper's abilities by far. I have a whole video on using Angel link below if you want more details. And that just about covers the basics of sniping in Battlefield 2042. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments and leave any tips that I missed out that might help other people. 
If you learned anything new, then give it a like. But if you knew everything already, then I guess you can leave a dislike. I'll be doing plenty of advanced guides for sniping and other things. So you might as well subscribe. It's free and you can always unsubscribe later. I hope this helped. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.